In the name of God who holds us even when we forget that we're being held. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> I have a confession to make. It's Lent now, so it's a time when confession is particularly appropriate, so let me confess to you all now. Every year on Ash Wednesday, as soon as the service has ended, the first thing I do as soon as I'm alone is I wash that black cross off of my forehead. Not that I'm ashamed of my faith. It's not that I don't want people to know that I've been to church. In fact, if anything, I sometimes get judgmental looks from people when I'm out and about and don't have the cross on my face. Particularly since I'm usually wearing a clergy shirt. People look at me like I've done something wrong on Ash Wednesday if I don't have that familiar smudge across my forehead. It's the same every year. As soon as the service ends, I can't wait to wipe it off. The reason is one that has figured prominently in my own Ash Wednesday sermons many times through these years. The pattern we have of reading this gospel on Ash Wednesday, when we're told so clearly to be aware of practicing our piety in public, and then moving from there to a ritual wherein we literally put a symbol of our faith across our faces, I've just never been able to square the two. Hearing about and preaching about the dangers of parading our faith for others and then walking out of church with a symbol of our faith emblazoned above our eyes, it's just always felt sort of wrong. So this year, when our bishop asked us not to do a physical distribution of ashes, I'll be honest, it made sense to me. And not just because of the pandemic, it made sense to me because it felt a little more honest and authentic than our traditional practice does. That's not to say, however, that finding a way to remember our mortality at the beginning of Lent isn't important. It's just that this year, we can't rely on our familiar tradition. This year, we have to think about it a little harder. Well, let's be honest. We're coming up on a full year that we've been living through this pandemic. We have seen horrific images of hospitals filled to capacity of refrigerated trucks lining the streets to hold the dead because the morgues were full. I would bet that we all know someone who has contracted the coronavirus or who's been sick with COVID, even if we haven't been sick ourselves. We've all heard stories from people too close to us who have been, who've had loved ones become frighteningly ill even some who have died. And we've seen the ravages of this disease scrawled across the television in the form of numbers that stretch higher than our imaginations can take us. This year we don't need to be reminded of our mortality. Certainly not the way we do in other years. Our mortality is on full display. We can't escape it. And even if you did need to be reminded of your mortality through a physical sign on your face, you don't need a black ashen cross for that this year. We all carry reminders of our mortality with us every time we leave the house. It's this. Masks. They remind us that we need to be protected from an unseen assault on our bodies. They remind us that we need to protect others from ourselves, even if we don't mean any harm. 
They remind us of the Christian duty we share to love one another. Because what greater symbol of love is there than sacrificing something for the benefit of others? I don't think anyone likes wearing masks. But we do it because it's the best way we know to protect ourselves and to protect each other. But the biggest differences between our masks and our ashen crosses are twofold. One, it is easy to wipe off that cross. We wear it this one day to remember that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But once this interval passes, the cross can go away. We can go back to living our lives like things are normal. The pandemic means that masks can't go away so easily. We, have, we each have to face our mortality day in and day out for the season that keeps stretching out before us. But the other difference is that the cross specifically ties our mortality to our faith. While I will admit that I won't miss the ashes this year, I do miss the cross. I do miss the way I can feel it there, as long as it's there. I will miss the way that I see each of you just for a moment, the way we connect physically as the body of Christ as the cross is drawn. The way I can feel your skin and you can feel my hand. That's something we'll miss this year. But I do want us to share the cross together. In a few minutes, in the part of the service when we would normally share the distribution of ashes together, I'm going to ask that we all take part in doing that together. Even though we won't have ashes, we can still take a moment to feel our fingers on our own foreheads. We can draw the cross and trace it on our skin. We can feel the connection of Christ to our mortality. And we can share the traditional words that remind us that we are dust. And that like all things through all time, we will be dust again. Reminds me of a story that I've often told about my oldest nephew when his twin brothers were baptized. He was four years old at the time. After the church service, our family went out to eat together. There were aunts and uncles and cousins, and it was a great time. But after lunch, as folks were relaxing and visiting and starting to wander around, my nephew came and slid into my lap because something was bothering him. He said, Uncle John, I saw the priest draw a cross on my brother's heads during church. I assured him, yes, that's exactly what he had seen. He said, but I just went and looked, and it's not there anymore. What happened to it? I gave him an answer that probably wasn't terribly satisfying for a four-year-old, but it was the most truthful answer that I could come up with. I told him, the cross is still there, and it will be there forever. We won't be able to see it, but we will always know that it's there. And I told him, you have one too. When you were still a little baby, we all went into the church, and there was a baptism just like what your brothers just had, but it was for you. And after the priest poured the water over your head, he touched the oil and traced a cross on your forehead too. 
and traced a cross on his forehead with my own thumb and told him that it was right there. I told him, the priest said the same words over you that the priest said today over your brothers. He said, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. can't see it anymore, but we know it's there. And sometimes if you pay close attention, you can remember that it's there. And always know that it will be there no matter what. Today our Ash Wednesday crosses are like that. We can't see them. Seeing them isn't the point. Knowing that we are Christ's own forever is the point. Knowing that we are of this earth and that we will return to the earth is the point. We were from forever and we will be forever. We don't need to see the crosses for that to be true. We just need to be reminded of that. Today we are 